So thank you very much for the introduction. And I want to start with a situation. Imagine you're a network operator, you want to change your configuration, and you want to make sure that, you only, that your change only does what you intend to do and not more. And as you saw before, you can use a verifier. So you start to look online and you realize that many verifiers or several verifi verification tools exist. These tools more or less all follow the same recipe. First, you upload your configuration, you define a specification, you run the tool, and then up on the results, either you have to change something or you can directly deploy it. Now, it sounds quite easy. Upload the configuration, run the tool, but what is the specification? So the specification in general is kind of a description of the behavior of your system. So for a network, it could be, or it is the set of all policies that hold in your network. Here we have a set of policies, we have a network. So these policies should hold in your network. But what does it mean hold in your network? When all links are up, probably these policies hold. If some link fails, not all policies can hold anymore. And what if all link fails? probably almost no policies hold. So somehow the set of all policies is not enough. We also need a context under which these policies need to hold. And this is what the failure model is. A failure model is basically just a set of concrete environments. So a topologies in which you assign to every link the state of up or down. So a green check mark or a red cross. And you say, that in this context, so for these concrete environments, the set of policies should hold. Now, for a network operator, it could be quite cumbersome to really enumerate each and every single concrete environment. And this is why you can capture this by the symbolic environment where you assign every link, either the state to be up, down, or symbolic. And you provide an additional failure bound, which just says that at the same time, only two links can fail. So together, the set of policies and the failure model gives you the specification. Easy, no? Now you have the specification, you can run the tool. Well, writing a specification is extremely hard, not just for networking, but for, uh, for verification in general, as this tweet shows. And we actually talked to a network operator that told us they got a new uh, verification tool they wanted to use it, but in the end, the adoption of this tool fell through because they didn't uh, have the specification. It was too cumbersome to write it. There was actually also a recent paper at Hotnets by Ryan Beckett, which said that uh, verification tools are not that widely used that one would think. Many cloud operators use it, but kind of the average network operator still doesn't use network verification tools. There are many reasons for this, and one reason is also that you need to write a specification. You might not be convinced yet, so I have an example for you. We looked at the configuration of Internet 2 from May 2015. It only consists of 10 routers, and with our policy language, this specification consists of 4,000 predicates. So just imagine writing this specification by hand and doing so correctly. So that's where config to spec it comes into the picture. Config to spec takes the configuration, takes your failure model, and provides you with the full specification of that network. In the following, I will first talk through two straw man approaches that tackle the problem kind of from one angle and another angle. Then I'll show you how we can combine those two approaches and leverage their respective strength. And in the end, we'll look at how config to spec performs. So, Let's look at those Strawman approaches. First of all, you have kind of two search spaces. The failure model gives you the space of all concrete environments for which you want to find the policies that hold. And your policy language gives you the set of all policies that um, you, you want to look at. Now, we can look at those two spaces in isolation. We can use data plane an analysis to tackle kind of the failure model. We can use control plane verification to look at the policy space. Let's look at what I mean by this. So finding the specification for the entire failure model is difficult, but finding the specification for one single concrete environment is actually not that hard and can be done by data plane analysis. So here you see uh, basically the, 
the failure model, the configuration, and with this blue part, I want to show the space of all policies. So from the failure model, we can take one um, concrete environment, and together with the configuration, we feed this into a data plane analyzer. This computes us the forwarding state, and from the forwarding state, we, next, we can extract all the policies that hold for this concrete environment. Now, we can repeat this for every single concrete environment within the failure model, and we're done, because the specification consists of all the policies that hold for all the concrete environments. We simply have to intersect those sets, and we end up with the specification. Now, uh, as you can see, this is kind of an over-approximation that we start, and with the intersection, we slowly uh, get closer and closer to the actual specification. We can do the same thing by looking at the policies. So we use control plane verification, a normal verifier, just as was presented before. We take one policy after the other. We feed it together with the failure model and the configuration into the verifier. And the verifier then tells us whether this policy holds for the entire failure model or not. We repeat this for every single policy. And by then taking the union of all those policies that hold, we get the specification. So this is kind of an under approximation. We start with very few policies and we slowly start to expand it until we get the specification. So now both of these techniques have advantages and disadvantages. In data plane analysis, you can, for one environment, you can find all the policies that hold. Control plane verification, for all environments, you can find whether one policy holds or not. And to better articulate their strengths, I have to introduce another term, which is a violation. So a violation is basically a policy which is not part of the specification. So one concrete environment within the failure model violates this policy. And we have two types of violations. We have dense violations and sparse violations. A dense violation is is a policy which holds for almost no concrete environment within the failure model. So if you just take one environment, it's most likely this policy will not hold. A sparse violation, on the other hand, holds for almost all environments, and maybe for one or two environments, this policy is violated. So if we take an example, we have this failure model, and we have uh, two policies. The waypointing policy, so that, which says that uh, prefix P2 can re, uh, be reached from router R2 via R5, so a waypointing policy is violated by four environments out of the five environments. So if you randomly pick one, it's highly likely that um, you pick a uh, an environment that violates this policy. On the other hand, if we take a reachability policy, so P2 is reachable from R1, can only be violated by a single environment. So coming back to this comparison, data plane analysis is very good at quickly pruning these dense violations because you can just randomly pick one environment and it's very likely that you kind of prove that these uh, policies are not part of the specification. Whereas control plane verification is very good at finding these policies or finding an example of an environment such that you can prove that the policy doesn't hold. So the obvious question is, why don't you combine them? And obviously, yes, we will combine them. And this is our approach. So config to spec more or less consists of two parts. We use a data plane analysis tool. We use a verifier. And we have a predictor, which always decides whether you use data plane analysis or control plane verification based on what promises faster progress. Thanks to this combination, config to spec is precise. And with this, we mean we have this over approximation, which kind of includes all policies and refines it step by step. So we include uh, all policies that should be part of the specification. And thanks to this under approximation with the verification, we make sure that we don't include any policy which should not be part of the specification. So now let's look at how this works at a very high level. In the beginning, we start with this blue area, which shows kind of the space, again, of all possible policies. So this is our candidate set for the specification. We start analyzing one environment, another one, and another one. 
And you see in the beginning, we make quite fast progress in kind of cutting down this candidate space. And this is when the dense policies are being removed by the data plane analysis. But at some point, our candidate space is kind of uh, stagnates in size and we struggle with removing more and more policies from this candidate space. And this is an indicator for the predictor to, to see that more or less we have removed most of the dense violations and it's now time to switch to the verification part. And in the verification, we'll start picking one policy after the other. Some policies don't hold, some policies hold. And like this, in the end, it's like a Swiss cheese. We'll continue to make the holes until we end up with the full specification. So this works uh, quite well, but we still can improve the two techniques uh, in isolation. So data plane analysis really depends on what environments we pick and we look at. So by picking the environments to analyze in a smart way, we can speed up the process. In a very basic setup, you would just randomly pick one environment after the other. But like this, you cannot guarantee that the environments are different enough such that you get new insights. So what we do in uh, instead is that we pick the next environment based on the current candidate set. So to illustrate this, we have again a failure model and in our candidate set are just two policies. And those two policies are both for the same destination. So the previous environment we looked at was the following where all links were up but one, which led to this forwarding state. So now we could take as a next step, we could take either this environment where we fail this link here. So you see it will be this in the forwarding state. But obviously, if we fail this link, which is not being used to forward traffic before, it will probably not be used afterwards either. So it might not give us a lot of insights. However, if we use an, as next an environment that fails this top link, we will most likely get a different forwarding state that gives us more insights. The verification part, uh, we can improve by reducing the number of queries that we have to ask to the verifier. So in a very basic setup, you would just take every single policy, ask it to the verifier, and if you uh, find out that it holds, you put it to the specification. If it doesn't hold, uh, you will remove it. However, we already know that some policies just cannot hold based on the topology and on the failure model. So some policies require connectivity in the graph. For example, if we allow for up to one failure and two routers are only connected by one link, it's clear that there will be an environment where you fail this link and those two nodes will be disconnected, so you cannot have reachability between those two nodes. In a second step, the verifier that we use allows us to group policies that have the same destination, so we can ask multiple policies at once. So now let's see how this actually performs. And for this, we want to look at two questions. First of all, how does config to spec scale overall, or how, how, yeah, how long does it take to run? And second, how do those two techniques that I just introduced contribute to config to spec? To this end, we implemented a prototype of config to spec in Python and Java. We relied on Batfish and Minesweeper. If I would have known about Plankton earlier, we, had, we would have used Plankton and would have gotten much better results, maybe. Um, we generated uh, configs using netcomplete. We generated both OSPF and BGP configs for three types of networks, small to large networks between 30 and 160 routers. So first, let's look at how long it takes. On the y-axis, you will see the runtime, and we looked at three different scenarios. So we looked at a failure model with up to one, up to two, and up to three failures. And we report the time separately for OSPF and BGP configs because uh, BGP is much, much harder to compute for Minesweeper and Batfish. And we split up the time between data plane analysis and control plane verification. So what we realized is that there are kind of two special cases for small failure models. So failure models that co contain very few concrete environments, it's much better to just enumerate all environments and use data plane analysis and not go to verification at all. And for large failure models, so that allow for many failures, trimming plays a huge role. 
So basically, you have so many, you allow for so many failures that most policies just cannot hold uh, because the connectivity and the topology is not given. So the worst case for us is this up to two failures. Because up to two failures is a failure model that contains a lot of concrete environments that we have to look through. And um, it's, the failures are not enough such that trimming can really make a big difference. So for PGP, we use about 13.7 hours for a topology with 160 routers and for OSPF about four. Now let's look at how these two techniques contribute. So first, the policy of our environment selection. So what we want to look at is the point at which we switch from data plane analysis to verification, how quickly we reach this point, and how much we could reduce the candidate set. So on the x-axis, you will see the number of environments that we analyzed until we reach this point of switch. And on the y-axis, you see how large the candidate set, the remaining candidate set, is with respect to the initial candidate set we started with. So for the smallest topology, after about 37 environments, we reach this point, and the candidate set is at the size of about 40% of the initial set. If we wanted to reach the same size of initial set with a random approach, we would need more than double of the environments to analyze. And this is the same or gets even worse if we look at larger topologies. Secondly, we want to look at by how much we could reduce the number of queries that we need to ask the verifier. So we start as a baseline with the number of queries that are left or the number of policies that are left in this candidate set after the switch from analysis to verification. And this we de depict by this disk. And obviously, the smaller disk this gets, the better. So after trimming for a medium topology with two, uh, up to two failures, we're down to 16% of the initial uh, queries or policies. And when we group those remaining policies, we're down to only 3.5% of the initial uh, queries. So this highly depends, obviously, on the topology and on the failure model. And with that, I'm almost at the end. So obviously, we have more information in the paper, also additional experiments. So if you're interested, I want to encourage you to check this out. Config to spec is a system that automatically learns the network specification based on the configuration and based on the failure model. It does this in a scalable manner thanks to this novel uh, combination of data plane analysis and control plane verification. And this specification can be used beyond just verification, as I explained in the beginning. You can also use it for what-if analysis, config streamlining, or just to get a generally a better understanding of what is going on in your network. Before I finish completely, I just want to acknowledge my co-authors, so Dana from Technion and Martin and Laurent from ETH Zurich. And with this, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take your questions. Let's take questions. Uh, very nice work. Uh, one question I have is how do you sort of define that initial space of policies from which you start refining? So, um, theoretically, you can say that the initial space is the full space that your policy language uh, defines. But this space is huge. So for our evaluation, we always started with, we did one data plane analysis. This gives you all the policies that hold for the very first data plane. And this is then our initial size of the candidate set. So in that, basically, every path in the data plane becomes a policy? More or less, yes. OK, thank you. Uh, so control plane verifiers will provide you a counterexample. Did you explore at all whether that could be useful in thinking about what to prune or what to explore next? Yes, so this was our first intuition to just use the counterexample and say this is the next environment we want to look at. But we realized that the counterexample kind of helped us remove this one policy that we just removed, but it did not help us that much in kind of pruning the remaining policies in the candidate set. So it helped us much more looking actually at what policies are left and what paths they take through the network. 
So my question is, uh, you start by learning the, uh, uh, the policy from the data plane and the config. You assume the data plane and the config are correct, right? Uh, how do you handle conflicting policies or their potential errors? Yes, so this is the stand, or it's the common problem that if your input data is wrong, your output will be wrong as well. So at the moment, we just assume what you put in is what you intend to put in, and we cannot kind of tell you there might be a mistake. But this is in our pipeline for future work that kind of given a config, can we identify policies or cases which might be an error uh, that, that you did not intend to uh, configure? Just because, for example, we see that all routers in this area can reach this one specific router, but one router cannot. So kind of this anomaly detection and from this um, try to learn, yes, what might be mistakes in the data which, yes, is already present and we cannot really detect otherwise. But it's more a heuristics approach. Thank you. All right, let's thank our speaker.